All right, hey, welcome to Hit. This is Chris Ciccinelli, and we are talking everything high intensity tactics for growth. And today is a very, 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 very special day. We are at podcast number five zero. I'm super excited about that. That oh. is fantastic. I am Miss Cheryl Force, Senior Vice President of Sales and Training Pure Romance, and Brian Parsley. He is Brian Parsley. I mean, there's that's what it is. And I'm super excited to have both of you on here. I appreciate you guys uh, doing this today for uh, podcast number five zero. 50. 50. 50. 50. Five zero. You're going to be 50 soon. Uh, Brian, that's like in oh, six no. years. I mean, would you really back down a little bit? Back down. I mean, I am I am not. You know what? 50 is like the new 30, though. So I'm okay with it. Right? You know who says that? Old people. Yeah. Well, yeah. today it is all about how to have a proper mindset. And, and, and I want to talk about this today because I thought on the 50th podcast, we should really kind of talk about things that are going to increase our lifespan, right? We want, all want to live longer. Mm-hmm. Like I'd love to live to like 120. Oh, um, really? I would. You know, I was talking to one of my friends the other day and he was talking about his dad was a prisoner of war right after McCain, you know, uh, you know, went, got, got shut down. He was also a prisoner of war, came, you know, came home after, after everything. And, and, um, uh, he was talking about his dad, you know, works out every day. He's 90 years old. And I wow. said, well, you know, how, how has he been able to do this? And he said, you know, Chris, a lot of it is uh, the way he looks at the world, the way he looks at his life, you know, and, and I thought that that was kind of interesting. Um, Isn't that a reality check? Prisoner yeah. of war and most of us get upset if the Starbucks line is too long. <laughs> I mean. Yeah, but did you see the line? Come on. <laughs> hey, listen, I don't see a line because I mobile order. Come on, now. Brian, we're being positive today. <laughs> I, I mobile order because I want to make sure. But I think about this. We all want to make sure that we're kind of lowering our stress levels, right? You know, I want to give people a way to go out there and also lower the rate of depression. I mean, depression, you know, more and more people are depressed about small things in life. Ultimately, too, we want to be able to go out there and help people have, you know, better physical well being because I think, you know, all of the things that yeah, people are struggling with, it comes down to the way that they look at themselves, the way that they think about the world and that's why today was about how we can start thinking about how to worry about accepting ourselves and uh and and how do we make sure that we start giving ourselves more affirmations um more you know mental time and telling us how great we you know we truly are as human beings yeah i i think that's a powerful topic because we're so worried about other people accepting us and what you said just nails it, it accepting ourselves, and also it's easy to blame and say society has created this this mantra that says success is your car your your watch your house whatever it is but what if we just switch the mindset to say what instead of measuring success by those physical metrics what if we were able to do it based on smiles or moments of happiness within our own life mm-hmm. yeah I, I think it'll compelling compel i think that argument will 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 grow those other things because that just happens i think but but the most successful people cheryl i'm sure you've seen this the most successful people in business typically have a pretty decent mindset along with it I think they have to have a decent mindset in order to be successful. But I think there's a really healthy wave that's happening now of mental health and physical health coming together. And that manifests itself in personal and business. I mean, you can't have your mind be a garbage can and expect to have good physical health. Right. You're not going to feel good about yourself. You're not going to feel good about the world. And and I agree. I think that our measurement of happiness should definitely be redefined. And I agree with you. It's not about the car. It's not about the house. It's not it's not about any of those things. If inside the house there isn't joy and happiness. Oh, yeah, that is that is so true. I mean, and I think joy and happiness starts with kind of how we wake up, how we attack the day. Yeah. You know, I know that uh, you two definitely, uh, you know, are, are very busy. You're very successful at what you guys do. Um, you, you have to give yourself to a lot of people, right? You, you have your staffs that you run. You also have not only just staffs, but you have, you know, external people that are needing time or need advice. You're coaching people through some problems that they're dealing with on a day-to-day basis. You also, you know, have significant others. You have family members that are requiring time time and you know and people don't don't know that all the stuff that you guys go through that you have to get mentally prepared each day yourself to be able to to kind of attack that and we talk about that a lot because you know even myself included you know I have to get I have to talk differently to myself each morning I wake up, you know, each day I go out there, people are like, are you, do you just wake up happy? Are you, are you just excited every day to get in the gym at 5 a.m. in the morning? Or are you excited about, you know, going out there and doing these, these motivational talks and all this other stuff? I said, first of all, I'm not a motivator. I'm a realist, but I wake up every day and I have to tell myself, Hey, it's your day. 
Chris Chickadelli, you have to go out there. You have to attack this. Nobody else is going to get me motivated. It's not that I'm going to wake up and listen to Tony Robbins, you know, talk, or I'm going to listen to Simon Sinek. And I love listening to those podcasts, but they're giving me different tools to deal with things. But to get myself excited, get myself in that right mindset, I think we have to talk to ourselves completely different. It, it's definitely okay to talk to yourself, but if you ever catch yourself saying, huh, <laughs> that's a problem. <laughs> I, I think what we suffer from is what's called subjective scarcity. And we look in the mirror, we have these beliefs. <laughs> Imagine, you know, moms, I think are the best example of this because a mom doesn't wake up in the morning and the child says, you know, I'm, I'm really sick. Well, you know what? I'm not really feeling it today. They don't do it. They just step up and, and go through it, push through. My daughter asked me this week, she said, uh, what's the purpose of life? Which is a huge question for a 14 year old. Yeah. And I looked at her and I said, you, you're the purpose. And, and I think that, and, and what you were, uh, alluding to with the, uh, with the prisoner of war, or was it you with the prisoner of war? Yeah. Okay. The prisoner of war was that, um, um, there's a purpose. They, they had to look beyond the circumstance mm -hmm. and drive through a greater thing more than them. Yep. Yep. Yeah. I think it's a good reminder though. What you said is it's internal. It's not external, mm -hmm. right? It starts with you. And I think that the vast majority of people already have the capacity, the capability and the skill set to really have a different mindset. But we look to all these outside resources, right? We look to, I'm going to ask other people what the meaning of life is. And truth be told, I'm the only one who can answer that question for myself. <laughs> yeah, you are the key. Because your, your life, what you deem as happiness and what you deem as happiness and what I deem as happiness might be similar, but they all can have little different nuances. Like you say purpose, right? Like you have to have this higher purpose. Like right now everybody goes, your kids are your purpose. I'm like, no, my kids are not my purpose. My kids are my why. It's a little bit different. Everybody's like, oh, you know, you know, uh, well, what do you mean? I don't understand. I'm like, well, I, I'm doing this because each and every day, my why is I want to be able to take care of them. I want to provide for them. I want to be able to make sure that they go to great schools. I want to make sure that they have a great education, that they develop into be go good human beings. But my purpose is so much greater than that. My purpose is, is how do you make the world a better place? How do you, you know, instill values and show other people different ways of, of, of living and different life? And you can't do that. You can't make the world a better place. You can't have this higher purpose out there if you're not taking care of the main driving force of all that, which is yourself. And I will tell you, uh, it was the hardest thing for me to figure out along this journey. Because with HIT, I've been telling it, you know, I, I love to speak all the things that, you know, have helped us go from a million to $250 million company. What's helped us build a great culture, a great sales force, good team, is that when I really truly look into, is it because we have great shipping or we had great products or is it that we had great training or we had, what was it? I think it's, we just had great mindset because I think so many people have great products. They have great services, but it, during the grind of every day, it can tax somebody. And from there, if you're not mentally strong, not physically, because you got to be mentally strong to go into the gym. You got to be mentally strong to want attack that next day. You got to be mentally strong to go to that next hotel, to sit in an airport for three hour on a, on a delay. You got to be mentally strong to when you're coaching somebody and they're giving your problems, not to just go out there and solve their problems for them. All of that takes very, 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 uh, strong mental strength. I, yeah. I think, um, I love the word strong, Yeah, but I've even had to shift my mindset on this and I go to resilient. Ooh, I like that. Because it doesn't mean that every single day I'm going to wake up whistling Dixie and just feeling great about the world. Life mm -hmm. happens. Like life is not easy. The fact that we've got people out there thinking that they can have the perfect, most balanced, oh. beautiful insta life ever, I think is so damaging because life is hard at moments. But if you can be resilient mm -hmm. as you're moving through those moments, Yes, it takes strength, yep. but it's a different kind of strength. It's a, well, I have to ask you two questions. Yeah. Are you ready? Yeah. Um, one, when you woke up this morning, you got in late last night, or yep. I'd say early in the morning. Yeah, 1.30. Yep. Um, what did you say to yourself? 
this well the first thing i said is i got out of bed i'm like oh my god this is so early because the kids are down there at 6 a.m you know i'm normal too right like i roll over i'm like oh my goodness like i i just hit the bed you know because even when you get home at 1 30 you really can't fall asleep until two o'clock right it just it, you know you're on your phone you're checking things and you're just kind of winding down from the day but as soon as you know the kids came down uh everything's starting to move the first thing i said is all right it's time to get your mind right all right, you, you've got it. You got to take the kids to school. You got to make sure that you got them breakfast. You got to make sure that they get all their medicines and they you do everything. The I did the woo. It's going to be a great day. And I do that in the shower. I do that in front of my mirror. And, you know, and, and some woos are different than other woos, right? Some days I'm like, yes, let's go. And then some days I'm like, come on, Chris, come up. You can do the yes. And, you know, and I have to. I have to tell myself every day to attack it. Yeah. Um, so it begs two questions. Yeah. Why was it important that you started your day with making sure they had breakfast, making sure that they were cared for, making sure they were ready for their day? You know, I, I think it's, you know, if it's routine, but it's more because they're, they are my kind of why. I mean, like, I want to make sure I take care of them. I want to make sure that they have a healthy start to the day. Um, I'm supposed to be, you know, that, that person, they're 12, eight and, and, and seven. Right. And so, um, you know, I, I, I want them to have a great start to the day. That's why I do it. So you're supposed to provide that. What's really right. interesting is you set a higher standard for your level of thinking yeah. and what you're also presenting and putting in front of them. Yeah. Because if you had walked into that situation and was really negative and was like, come on, we just have to go out and do this. Yeah. You have to get to school. You can't be late. You can't do this. You can't do that. Then what are you setting them up for? Yeah, you're setting up for bad. And I've had those days where you're like, all right, we're running late. Let's go. Let's get out of the house. And instead, those days are chaotic because their day at school is not good. Their day, you know, they, they come home and they're frustrated for the day. So I've learned that, you know, if when they're getting up and they're getting moving, that we're, we're not using, no, you can't wear that. No, you can't do that. I mean, it's like, hey, I like that outfit, but have you thought it's going to be 50 degrees out? Do you think you might need jeans? No, dad, I'm good. Okay, your choice, your decision. I'm not going to sit back and force a situation because at the end of the day, I've learned that those those negative things that I put onto them, they start internalizing, they start thinking about it. And I don't want somebody telling me at night, hey, Chris, you should be wearing a suit today and not wearing this. Oh, I want to wear this because I'm comfortable. And that's what I did today. I wore I wore my vest. I'm, I'm comfortable. I feel good. And that was my mindset this morning. I feel like I'm in the middle of a, uh, what is it, a psychologist session. I love it. <laughs> and how does that oh, make I you feel, so. Mr. Chick I hope so. Um, I, but you have kind of gathered your own affirmations for yourself. And even though it might not feel like it, come on, I've got to get in the right mindset mm -hmm. is an affirmation that you've developed for yourself. Yes. So how do you think other people can adopt that mindset? Because I know when I'm around other people and they're asking me about how you operate, mm -hmm. they're always like, is he always like this? Is he human? Does he sleep? Does he ever take a break? And is he always that positive? And I'm like, well, he's human. Yeah. So he's going to have good days, bad days, and all the twists and turns that we all go through. Yeah. Now you've created your affirmation. How do other people adopt that? I think it's, it's, here's the thing. People think there has to be this roadmap or this plan for aff affirmations or how to talk to them. Um, you know, I think the first thing that I had to, f I had to figure out is I had to figure out how to be grateful. Um, I had to figure out how to be grateful for all the things that I have for my life, for my family, for, you know, the business, every, all these things. And therefore, you know, I'm sitting here thinking, I don't want to, I don't want to lose all the things that I've worked really, really hard for, or the things that at the time that I put in. So I could either be a miserable person, a miserable dad, miserable business owner, or I can look at everything I have as a gift and be grateful for it. And I, and I chose that. So once I made this choice of being grateful, cause I think you have to start there. And, and once you make that, how do you continue to stay that way is, is you have to tell yourself each and every day, this isn't one day. It's not, you can't eat right one day and lose weight. You can't work out one time and think you're going to shed some pounds or get the muscles that you want. It is a constant every day occurrence that has to be there. And you're right, Cheryl, I have the days that are bad and the days that are not great. Um, and you are human, but uh, it's you got to constantly train that muscle, that muscle that goes out there, that muscle of giving yourself that, those affirmations, those beliefs and, and the, and the, and the ways to motivate yourself first and not looking for others to motivate. I was in my early part of my career, I was looking for so many more people to motivate me or get me, you know, stimulate it with, with mindset or, or growth. And, 
and it was good and it would stick for a little bit, but then I would revert back into being ungrateful or angry or it whatever. It wears off. It's like a drug. It, it does. It wears off. Yeah. And, until you choose to do it for yourself, it never sticks. Yeah. I, you know, we can, we can change the word affirmation to <laughs> mantra. Yeah. Whatever. But my uh, 14 year old um, and you know, she sees a counselor also just kind of dealing, you know, teenage emotions and things. It's a and tough part of life. Yeah. It's very hard. And, and, but it doesn't change as we get older. This is what I'm finding. And we just had this conversation. You said gratitude. That's the basis. She came home from the therapist the other day and she said, you know, I just, I realized that I'm, my heart is heavy. This is a 14 yeah. year old. Yeah. My heart is heavy. I don't know why I know I'm blessed but I don't understand why I'm sad all the time. And I, I, I just don't, I'm not good enough. Well, part of it is she watches YouTube and comparing herself to oh. the highlight reel of some perfect person that doesn't even exist. Yep. But beyond all that, I sat her down and I said, it's okay to feel sad and it's okay to have doubt, but I want you to think about your personal life. And her name's Alexis, if you're not sure. But I said, Alex, you can see, you can walk. You can, and I went through a list of 10 things and those are things that you don't realize until they're gone. Yeah. And if we can shift our mindset to all these mantras, all these affirmations, if we can focus it truly, it's not about attitude is gratitude and all that stuff. But honestly, think about in your life, how grateful we are to be here. Because if today, by the way, three o'clock today, you're going to get hit with a limousine. You're not, you're going to no longer be with us. Your whole a day limousine? sort of shifts, right? Yeah. Well, a limousine's better than a truck. But like, <laughs> okay. imagine if you know today's your last day, would you really get pissed about the line at the Starbucks? Well, so what's the difference between your 14-year-old that you're helping to navigate through life and you as an adult now? Mm -hmm. And my belief is that you understand the power of that mindset and knowing that I do have to look around and say, what am I grateful for today? And I have to put that at the forefront. Yeah. Uh, like we said, life doesn't get any easier as an adult, but our skill set and our ability to really control what pops into our mind and therefore how it impacts the feels, right? The emotions, whether it's therapy or not, I think that's the difference. You're yeah. still a 14 year old. You just got 100%. a whole host of tools that are so different. You just get stronger. <laughs> life gets harder, you get stronger. Resilient. It is resilient. It's like, yeah. uh, you know, um, I was I was with a group of people this week, very, uh, you know, I would say very conservative people, and they were asking me like, man, it's got to be so hard for you. Uh, you know, it, I, I wouldn't even want to walk in your shoes. I, I, this is so terrible to have a transgender daughter. And like, how do you, how, you know, like how do you, you know, deal with this? And and I'm sitting there thinking to myself. If my mindset wasn't strong enough and, and I my mindset wasn't, you know what, I'm blessed that I have this child in my life and that this child, and I'm grateful that this child is, is there. Now, is Elsie going to have a tough road? Yes, 100%. She's going to have a tough road. But I'm grateful that this child is out there to make change. This child is out there to do different things, made you know us as a family, our office, our sales force, you know, uh, more accepting, you know, more open to, to people. But if I wasn't strong enough, I might start feeling sorry for myself and I might start being like, yeah, it's, it's, it's really terrible. And, you know, and, and, uh, you know, it's, it's awful. Well, what am I doing now? I'm letting that kind of come into me. Then I'm going to start treating LC differently. I'm going to start being this overprotective. I'm going to be like, you know, always conscious about what's going on in the world. I don't want that. My mind was no, you know, I'm actually really blessed that I had this child. What do you mean you're blessed? I mean, who would want that? Well, I want that because you know what? She's living her authentic self. Could you imagine her not being able yeah. to be this strong at this age and living a false life. I said, I'm actually truly amazed that the child is this She's strong. She's luckier than us. Oh, and, and so <laughs> when, when I hear those types of things, if I wasn't mentally strong, I would have given in and been, I would have found the weak Chris. But because, you know, of building this, this mindset around it and this, this strength around it, um, I'm able to utilize that as education. And they were like, wow, that's so positive on how you see things. I'm like, yes, you know, don't feel sorry for somebody, you know, be understanding, be empathetic, but pass it on to, you know, another person. And I want to be, use that microphone, like I said, to go out there and educate more people. So my purpose here is to go out there and make sure that I'm, I'm ready for those conversations every day. I'm attacking those conversations because you know what, if, if the week Chris shows up, I might give in and I might fart, start feeling depressed. I might start doing the law of comparison. Like, man, my life is not as good as that person's life. Well, can I tell you that conversation later on that and, and the time frame went, well, I have a child that, you know, is, is, is hooked to meth. 
And, you know, I said, yeah. I said, you know, and I'm just every day, you know, it, 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 this is miserable and this is, you know, something that's, that's terrible. I said, well, no, how are you going to deal with that? I don't know, Chris. I'm, I just, every day I'm depressed. I, I can't get my head right because of this child. And, and these are things that I said, well, you know what? You got to take care of yourself first. You got to be able to take care of you and from you taking care of yourself and figuring out you're going to help work with that child. You're going to be able to go out there and go to a support group. Oh, I can never go to one of those support groups with them. Well, why? Why couldn't you do Such it? Such limiting thinking. It is. And that's where I think that you, if we create our strong values and we have a different mindset wrapped around um, uh, <laughs> I want, I want to call these individuals up that you were with and give them a few affirmations. I know. I, I, I want to, too, because I, I mean, like, if I think about that, you're going to, every family has got problems. Every family has got issues, except my family for who they are, except my family for who I am. Everybody's got uniqueness. Yeah. What, what they don't have the opportunity to see, because they're only seeing it from their point of view, and that's how we view everything. Um, I got the opportunity to spend a few minutes with Elsie on Saturday night, yeah. and I will tell you, a bright vibrant, beautiful individual. Like this individual takes over the room like that. Yeah. I mean, and, and to me, that is just, that's exciting. I mean, that has to be exciting to be around. I, I know probably, confidence is a 10 out of 10. Yeah, but, but, but that's probably thing, like, not always easy as a parent no. to guide that individual through their life, right? But oh my gosh, she is amazing. But I do think, and I'm not gonna, I, and I wanna make sure she's strong. And I think that's, if parents are listening to, to, to this today, it's, you know, but it starts with, you as a parent do also need to make sure you're in a good mental space. You're strong. You're giving yourself affirmation because if your kids see you believe in yourself and your kids see you being confident, that's the stuff that they're going to sit back. I mean, why does Elsie want to take a stage every time she's somewhere? Because she's like, dad, I, I, I see you do that. I mean, it's, it's nothing for you to go up in front of 3000 people. They look at that as normal. And, and I sit back and, and I yeah. think that she's like, how do you do it? I said, you know what, honey, it was a lot of practice. It was a lot of time, but it was also making sure that, you know, every day daddy was like, look, I'm going to, I'm going to attack the day. I'm going to attack. I'm going to learn something new. I'm going to be excited for this. I'm not going to be scared. I'm not going to be a shepherd, you know, a sheep. I'm going to go out there and, and do things differently. And I think that that's a mindset. I think both of you probably see so many people when you're out speaking and talking to people that want to make a change, they come up to you afterwards and, and they're like, man, you know, I just, I want a better life. I want to make more money. I want to, I want to do something different. And you probably sit back and, and probably say the same thing to them. The only way change is going to happen is if, if you change your behaviors, you change yourself. I don't know what your advice to people is. Well, like I, I would say don't, don't stop worrying about you're going to be seen as a fraud because that goes back to acceptance of others. Do it and know that you're going to screw up. Know that you're going to make mistakes. Know that it's always not going to be perfect. So I would, I would believe, and what we do with the kids is we actually write things on their mirror. Mm -hmm. uh, with uh, this, uh, you can so erase cool. it kind of mm -hmm. stuff. So we'll write little uh, affirmations or a statement. Mm -hmm. So th it forces them to see it, even on a non-conscious level. But come up with a financial one. Come up with a personal one. Come up with a gratitude one. Maybe two or three good ones that mm -hmm. resonate for you. You don't have to live with it your whole life, but we'll get you through those times. So when I talk to consultants that are in, in your business that, that say, you know, I'm just struggling. Like, I feel like people aren't going to buy from me. I like your mantra needs to be, I'm financially independent. I do not need to make a sell. I'm financially independent. I do not need to make a sell. And it's not that you don't want to sell, yeah. but you're going in with the attitude of more of I'm here to serve and help, not, oh my God, I hope they buy something because I need gas money. <sighs> Yeah, within a few sentences, I think when you talk to somebody after you come off the stage or you're coaching somebody or they're reaching out for help, usually in the first few sentences, I will gauge whether they're going to move forward and take action or not. Mm -hmm. And it's all language. Sure. They'll, they'll speak it. And, and look, I know people are funky on manifestation, right? Yeah. Oh, if you believe this to happen, if you believe it to be the truth, if you say it and speak it into the world, things will just magically happen. Um, I like to believe unicorns are real as well. Yeah. I'm also a realist mm -hmm. and I know it takes action. Yeah. And that comes in their language. And they will literally say whether they're gonna go after it or not. Mm -hmm. I don't even have to ask the question. 
Yeah, and I think that you're absolutely right. And I think the action is the step that most people you could you could want to do a lot of stuff, but if you're not yeah. taking action, it, it's it's just. I've not been manifesting happen. hair for a while, and it only grew on my back. <laughs> <laughs> well, be grateful; it grew yeah, somewhere. Grateful. Well, I can tell you right now. Uh, I know that this is our fiftieth podcast, and I really appreciate you guys getting on here. But is there is there something that you guys tell yourself every? I you you tell I I tell what I do every morning. Is there something that you do in the morning, the afternoon, before you go to bed? Is there something that you breathe into your into your own life each and every day because I'm telling you as a business owner as a whatever you are out there right now if you're an entrepreneur you're working for somebody you're trying to you know move better move forward in, in life um, I, I know there are people are always looking and, and asking questions what are other people doing to get themselves ready for the day and if you don't do anything that's fine too I just want to I'm know. glad you just asked the, said the last statement uh, if you don't do anything that's fine I don't think I do anything intentionally yeah. uh, but I do do things that I'm as we're sitting here talking that I didn't realize I do. Uh, something as simple as I, I say constantly for myself, I want to be the father that I wish I had. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I'm going to make a difference in people's lives. But these are things that I say to myself so I don't, um, you know, jump off the bridge. Mm -hmm. But, but at the same time, I don't realize, but now, now that we're having this discussion, I'm thinking I need to put a post -it note on my bathroom mirror again yeah. so I can see it. Okay. So I'm not going to, but, but, but I will say that on a non-conscious, unconscious, or habit perspective, I am saying things to myself uh, in a positive manner uh, because I know that if I, I'm tofu, I become what I'm around. Yeah. And I tell you, one of the hardest so decisions many people that- do. So many people do that. And, and, I, and I'm gonna tell you that the hardest decision I've made, even recently with an individual, is just cut them out of my life. And, and it's not because I don't like them or respect them, it's because they're negative and, and drama follows them. Yeah. And, and, and you are what you're around. And I just realized it's not healthy. Yep. And so anyway, it's been nice knowing you, Chris. Uh, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But, but that, that person's gone. And, yeah. and I will say all the weight was lifted off because I found myself trying to always please so, I, so not to upset the apple cart. That's not healthy. No. But, but if this mindset, so in the mantra, those are the things. But my, my children are going to be my number one my number one thing that I, I might screw up my life. I don't want to screw up generation 2.0. Yeah. Cheryl. Yeah. I mean, I've really made an intentional effort to show up as my best self mm -hmm. in moments when I really sometimes don't feel like I have it. Mm -hmm. um, I, I mean, I had a really crappy Monday morning this week. Um, and I then had to sit down and write a speech that I hope people were inspired by and connected to and it helped them. And I couldn't do that with that mindset of, oh, it's a crappy Monday morning. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I had to be like, I, know. I have to <laughs> shift this. And so I'm being way more attentional to be like, if I want other people to show up in this space as their best selves, then I have to do that. So I had to just take a mental moment and go, okay, that doesn't serve you what will serve you shift the mindset yeah. and then you know bring it yeah it's gonna like when you said that i was like i hope i don't get the you know if i ever have to do heart surgery or brain surgery on the day the doctor's not feeling really good you know stay away from right? mondays stay away from mondays <laughs> yeah but you know what that's the truth we have to be ready to go and and the only way you know to serve others and the only way you know to serve others is make sure you're serving yourself first and uh i want to tell you both you both have had very Wait, i have one question yes because i said i was going to ask you two yeah okay I'm ask it okay all right okay um why do you want the world to be a better place um, I, oh, that's very simple. That's a very simple place because there's going to be a time that I'm not here and there's going to be a time that my children are living here. And I want to make sure that, you know, they live in an area that's positive. They live in an area that's inclusive. They live in a, in a community that people want to, that there's the values, you know, the golden rules, treat, you know, treat everybody, um, with class, with grace, you know, and, and respect. And I think you know, when I look at it, that's what we, we want. And in a world right now today, a lot of people are sitting there saying, uh, the world is, you know, it's changing, you know, less and less people are communicating, less and less people are connecting. You know, I, I think we can be conduits for change. I think we can go through and teach our, our children values. Um, I teach them how to respect money, teach them how to set goals, teach them how to lead and not to follow. I think all of those things are important. And, uh, and I look to say, I want this best for not my generation of children, but the generations after that. And not just for my kids, but for your kids, for your kids, everybody, we want that in the world that we live in today. So 
that's why um, I, I think showing up as your best self is important. Yeah. And treating yourself with grace yeah. and respect and yep. class. And I think that that, when I see business owners, I will tell you, if you're sitting there trying to scale something and you're trying to grow something and you're listening to this, in which we talk about high intensity tactics, the biggest tactic, the one thing that I will truly tell you is the secret, the magic, the, the thing that you need to make sure you're con- very conscious over is every successful person that I have met and when I say success is not always monetary success, but the successful people, because I have people that have made a lot of money and I don't consider them successful, but the ones that have been, have been able to control their mind. They've been able to talk to themselves in a proper way. They've been able to go out there and understand that they have to take care of themselves first before they can serve others. Thanks so much for tuning in. I really appreciate this. You guys have had such an impact on my life. Thank you guys for being part of 50 uh, uh, Podcast. I appreciate everybody out there listening. I appreciate the rating, the reviewing. It's been fantastic. And we are making some changes here on HIT. We are going to be making some interviews with some CEOs, local business owners. And we're going to continue on our journey here to give you the best when it comes to tactics to grow your business. Thanks so much for tuning in. Remember, you've always had the pen to write your chapters. Make sure you living life by design. Have a great day.